We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. This is AEW Unrestricted. I am Will Washington. She is Aubrey Edwards. This is uh, such an exciting time for AEW. It always is an exciting time for AEW. But in particular, I am just so excited about some of the stuff we have coming up. Uh, we've got Cleveland right around the corner. we got Halloween coming up. And we just finished up with Wrestle Dream. We got to be in Aubrey's neck of the woods, which is Ooh. always a good time. How was it for you? How was it getting to, to have such a short travel time to work? It was interesting because Tacoma is one of those places that for me, it, on non-traffic, it's 45 minutes. Uh, with traffic, it could be up to two hours. And Seattle's real good about shutting down the major highways on the weekends for construction, which makes everything even longer. So I got a hotel room. <laughs> I oh, did, did not you? drive to work that day. I was like, uh-uh, I'm avoiding this. But Oddly was, enough, uh, though, I felt like travel was pretty simple. I don't know. I Coming out of the hotel, it was like maybe uh, the hotel to the arena felt like because you guys were near the airport, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a thing is that you didn't have to deal with five or five twenty. So when you were only on oh. like, I, I could go on and on. We could do a whole podcast about Seattle and the Washington State Department of Transportation. It's fun, but uh, it's funny because like Russell Dream itself was sort of like this really emotional roller coaster. Like my mom fell out of her chair when Takeshita won the title because she was just so absolutely excited. And I'm like, is she okay? And my sister's like, yeah, she's fine. She's just really, really excited. And I'm like, okay, okay. The other one, completely unrelated to wrestling. So main events going on, which is this crazy, insane, violent match, right? And all of us are trying to get into our positions for whatever happens next. And I literally don't know what's happening next. They've just said, it's chaos. Take your cues accordingly. Oh, okay, cool. I have no idea what's going on. And I'm watching Jeff Jarrett describe things to extras like, okay, we're going to do this, and then you guys are going to come out, and then this, and then just keep this in mind, blah, blah, blah. And if you've ever seen Jeff Jarrett talk, he's very animated with his hands. Yes. And I knew this, and what I should have done was not be standing there with my meal prep right next to him. So I've got this little dish <laughs> with rice and vegan chicken and some fruit and some cooked spinach, and I'm real excited about it. He goes, and then this, and then this, and his arm goes really wide, and just everything goes everywhere there's it's like a wedding with the amount of rice that goes up in the air and i'm just standing there it's in my eyelashes it's on my shirt and i'm just like i think i have to go out in 10 minutes and i have no idea if i'm covered in rice or not so normally we're concerned about whether or not we're covered with like people's blood before we run back out there but i'm like nope just just vegan meal prep no big deal <laughs> so that's yeah. how my that wrestle dream went <laughs> That's the thing to be covered in in Commission State, Washington, because right. th there's blood, then you've got answers. Uh, you've got right. questions. Now you've got we have answer, to stop but... things. We have to have conversations with people. There's got to be paperwork. But rice, rice is okay. <laughs> Commission rice doesn't okay. mind about rice. Awesome. Well, I mean, Russell Dream is crazy. We're on the road to full gear. It's nuts. And it's a very exciting time in AEW. There's lots of things happening. It's a very inspiring time in AEW. We have lots of people coming through the doors that are all very exciting, who have awesome backgrounds that we love hearing about on this podcast. So, Will, who's our guest today? Aubrey, the guest we have today is a very special guest uh, because yes. just last week he got to announce to the world that he is once again all elite. And I'm so excited to have this guest here on AEW Unrestricted. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Leo Rush. Leo, thank Yay. you for being here. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I was waiting for you to click a button and then a chair started. But <laughs> I'm glad you guys did it. <laughs> I'm glad you did it. Well, thank you for being here, Leo. Uh, I, I want to start with that. I want to start with the fact that you are once again all elite. Um, like it, it, it's. I suppose it, it wasn't quite an angle. It was legitimate. You signed your contract at Wrestle Dream. We uh, made the announcement Whoa. on the AEW socials, and you got to let yeah. the world know. Of course, you were interrupted by MVP and Shelton Benjamin, but uh, nonetheless, that was legit. You are all elite. Talk to me about how that all came together. Oh, man. Where to start? <laughs> I know. Where to start? I feel like I've had quite the interesting year. I, I ended up starting the year off doing my own tour on the independent circuit called the Where's Home World Tour. And I went everywhere. I went, I was all throughout America. I went over to Europe, Canada, and it was honestly a search for my home. I feel like I've been on the independent circuit for the last two, three years. You know, I've wrestled in other companies 
I've been at other promotions throughout the time that I first signed with AEW. And I don't know, I was just trying to figure out where home was and uh, kind of the tail end of that tour. I got a random text three in the morning saying if I can show up at AEW in LA. The Casino Gauntlet match. Uh, I, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, the Casino Gauntlet. So many things were going through my head. And I was extremely excited. I knew that it was going to be uh, an actual surprise, even though I, I did a surprise in the Casino Battle Royale before. But I knew that this one was going to be like legitimately a surprise, surprise. But uh, ever since that day, just a lot of hard work, just a lot of staying consistent with myself, staying consistent with AEW, letting them know that so much time has passed. I'm in a much better place. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to be here. Um, I'm ready to be all elite. You know, I didn't say that right off the bat, but <laughs> <laughs> but all the work that I put in, you know, I think that ultimately gave me the the time and space to see if I did want AEW to be my home. I feel like if it went any other way other than how it went down um, at Wrestle Dream, it probably wouldn't have been the right fit, you know, again. <laughs> but now that I've gotten a chance to be in the locker room, be on all the shows, be on Ring of Honor, Collision, you know, Rampage, Dynamite, be able to work with Tony, be able to work with all of the, the guys and girls in the locker room again, I feel like it showed me that, yeah, this is the place that I want to be. So what would you say is sort of the biggest difference between Leo Rush this time around versus last time you were all elite? I think last time I had a lot of fear. I think I was going into it scared. I think I was, it almost felt like I was getting another opportunity at being Leo Rush on television, but it almost didn't feel fair uh, that I had to do it in this way. I was still so young. I was still I can't say that I'm young forever, <laughs> but it's true. I feel like people in wrestling are younger for longer than they would be yes. if they were like in nor in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was doing, you know, I was going through so much during that time. That was during the pandemic. So everything outside of what AEW was, was, you know, obviously going on. And it was just kind of a disaster off the jump. But it was nobody's <laughs> fault. I think it was just not the right time. I don't think it was the right time for me. I don't think it was the right time for for AEW to have me there in that mental state that I was in. And it just wasn't fair for, I don't think for both, for both parties. So, um, but now I feel like I'm in a, a space where I feel confident. I feel, I feel a lot wiser. Uh, I feel a lot mm. more prepared than I was before. And I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can bring to the table and I want to offer that. And I want to be a part of what AEW is doing. And I want to be a part of the people that want to make AEW what it is. And I'm just going into it with a much, a much different mindset. And I think those, that's the biggest difference. Well, I think a lot of people kind of undersell because you'll be 30 this year, correct? I will be 30 this year. Oh, dude. 30s are way better than 20s. I'm just going to put it out there. Like, you've got a lot to look forward to. Well, and you know, that that's the big thing that I've always recognized is that I think a lot of people undersell. Like, three years may feel like a short amount of time, like, from an outside perspective. But when that three years is the difference between your 20s and your 30s, like, it is such a maturity milestone to hit that when you do hit that point and all of a sudden it's like there's just certain things that just priorities change there's so many things that just click differently and so you know i i can definitely just respect the idea of uh you know i i felt like for me 26 was a completely different william washington than 30 year old me like i in yeah. uh as a parent like everything there's just so much that can change and that can affect you and so like i, I fully respect the idea that yeah you, you're in a different headspace today w would you agree with that yeah no, for sure no i definitely i definitely agree with that one of the things that didn't really change is the fact that the first time around you were tied to um, Dante Martin. Mm. Now, this time around, uh, you're also getting to experience a very different Dante Martin. His entourage has expanded yes. because at the time <laughs> Darius was injured uh, and you were really kind of filling Darius's role with, with Dante. Of course, Action Andretti hadn't debuted yet. Layla Gray is in effect, and you guys are suddenly a click. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to talk a bit about how that's all worked out and how um, you guys have come together as a group. I don't even know how 
that happened, <laughs> but it works. I feel like I have so much history with all of these people. Me and Action, or well, Action, he trained at the same school that I trained at in Maryland, MCW. We were basically trained by the same trainer who unfortunately passed away years ago. So I feel like we, we have that bond when it comes to work within wrestling and just how we approach our in-ring style and um, energy and, and all of that. Um, Dante, the obvious history with Dante being the first time that I was signed to AEW, which is crazy because I remember getting a rental car and I asked Dante if he could drive and he said that he still wasn't old enough to, to rent a car. It made me think about just how young he was, even like back then when I first started doing stuff with him. And I was just like, man, but then Darius, uh, I mean, well, Dante and Darius, but Darius in particular, Darius met me when he was about, I think like 14, 15 years old. He sent me a picture of him coming to one of my meet and greet tables. I think it was before I, I, I went off the WWE. So that, blew my mind. I mean, I was young myself. So to see Darius, see myself standing next to Darius when he was so, so young, I was just like, man, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And I feel like I have all of these guys, all three of them. I feel like they, they kind of look up to me in a way. Uh, it makes me feel old. It makes me feel like I'm about to be 30 years old <laughs> <laughs> because they have watched me on TV when they were teenagers and they have looked up to me in, in that way. And I feel like it's so cool. I've always wanted to be in a group, but I wanted that group to be people who are kind of like me in a way. I want, I want us to all have like a similar style or a similar certain something. And maybe that's youth. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, maybe that's, Maybe that's youth that we have in, in common. And then, you know, Layla, I've been knowing Layla for years all over the independent circuit. Uh, so just having that connection with Layla is pretty cool to see that we can do something on screen now, which is which is really, really cool. I like that Leo feels old in this scenario, whereas Will and I are both closer to 40 than 30. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like, oh, you, you young kids. <laughs> yeah. He's like a walker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> it, it, it does. It feels like that in a way. It's so weird. I'm, I'm, uh, the, the beard is starting to come in now. Fine. So, yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's great because it's like it, it is interesting that like it's all context, right? Like you're the wise one. You've been through, through it all trials, tribulations, all this sort of stuff. So you're coming in with all of the like knowledge and the wisdom. So you are the veteran of the group, which is really crazy to see. But at the same time, I think all of you guys kind of complement each other. Like you're all flippy dudes, but you're all flippy dudes in very different ways. Yeah. So before we go to break, I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. What do you feel like is the thing that complements you guys well in the ring from a style perspective? I think we all are inspired in ways with each other's styles. I feel like we all bring a certain element of high flying that we don't see in ourselves. So when we're looking at each other wrestle, we're looking at it like almost like in a maze, like, oh man, like I wish that I could do that. But then like one of them are looking at one of us wrestling and they're like, oh, I wish I could do that. But I think we, I think we look up to each other. I think we admire each other's work and I, I feel like it complements each other uh, styles like very well. You know, Dante is the one who can probably jump on top of a, a building. Yep. Yeah, I'm the one who can move in in ways that you know nobody else uh, in the group can can move in different directional angles and with our quickness and and action is so crazy athletically gifted. It's it's insane. But then you have Darius who brings like somewhat of the power element to to the group. Which is which is cool because he's still a high flyer himself. And then Layla is Layla. She doesn't do that. She doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't do the high flying. But Layla, Layla has that certain thing about her that you know kind of brings out something all in us. Like she brings a certain fire, a certain kind of energy uh, that we all bounce off of uh, really well. So, God, I love it. I, I, I love what you guys have. have 
brought together to each other. And I kind of want to talk a little bit more about some of the experiences you guys have gotten to have together. And we're going to get to do that uh, right here when AEW Unrestricted continues a little more after this. AEW Unrestricted, we're back. It's Aubrey and Will with our guest, Leo Rush. We are talking about really your experience so far being a part of Top Flight as a faction. I really wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, your experience getting to to work zero hour this year in London at All In. Yes. You know, what was that experience like in, in front of that crowd and, and getting to be a part of that? That was breathtaking. I mean, it was incredible. I honestly couldn't think about anything other than I just never thought I'd be here again. I never thought that I'd be in AEW again. So for me to be able to work my way uh, from that casino battle royal to all in and just being able to, you know, be out there before the doors opened and, and see, you know, how big the stage was and how big the ramp was and to see, you know, who I was having that moment with. I think it was really special. Uh, I was proud of myself. I was proud of, you know, everybody that was there, not even just Dante Darius in action, but just the whole crew. I think it's pretty cool being a part of, and, and granted, I, I'm not an AEW day one person, but I have been around during the early years of, of AEW. And I mean, it's still the early years of AEW. So I feel like to just be able to be a part of that is really cool and really special. For me to almost be a part of AEW in two completely separate eras of AEW too, just seeing the, the the growth of it all and the growth within myself to get to this point. So it was it was really cool. Yeah, for sort of the context of the timeline, the first time you were around was during the pandemic, and the second time you were around, we're doing shows at Wembley. So obviously a very different AEW, and there's yeah. just been so much growth in us. But also it's kind of funny because it's like almost a comparison to you. There's so much growth with you, both as a person and a wrestler. The stories are parallel almost. It's really, it's really beautiful. I also loved that 16 man match because <laughs> I feel like everyone kind of stood out in their own way, yeah. even though there are literally 16 people and it's like, there's so much going on, but it's like everyone gets a little slice of appetizer to show who they are before like the main show starts. So it was really, really cool. And I'm glad you got to be a part of that. For the record, I've never been a part of a 16 man. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I think we were planning it and I literally just looked somebody and I go, okay, who's involved in the finish? And then I just didn't even bother knowing anything else. I'm like, we'll figure it out when we're out there. <laughs> that was really cool. That was really it was cool. insane. <laughs> so on, on the topic of matches, you've had a number of really awesome matches since you've gotten back. Um, another one we worked together was uh, you and Jack Perry when you were challenging for the TNT championship. Is there any in particular that really stand out to you so far in your time at AEW, either the first run or the second? This second run has been, I couldn't have even dreamt of some of the matches that, that I've had so far. You know, that ladder match is forever going to stick out to me. Being powerbombed on that ladder by Takesha was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the match that I found out what seemed like the day of that I was wrestling Pac, I was like, this is a really insane match to find out that I'm having today. I mean, this was this is somebody that I watched on TV. Um, I got to be in there with with Brian Danielson. I got to mix it up with Cardio. I got to mix it up with, with, with Roderick Strong, Mox. I mean, I've been I've been able to work with so many people and wrestle so many people that I've literally looked up to, um, and I get to work with them every single week. It's been really cool to be able to have these matches not even for myself but you know for the fans I, I, I feel like I always see so many messages uh, DMs or tweets of people saying like man I didn't even know that I wanted this match until like it, it was in front of our faces it, it's been really cool you know I will say that uh, one, one of the segments I, I produced that uh, ended up being for social was you with MVP and Shelton when I came up to you and told you about this and told you where it was leading, I could just see it in your face of like, 
oh, I get to work Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. I, get, I can definitely see that in this run, there is, there's a certain excitement about some of the, the names you're getting to work and some of the experiences you're getting to have with guys that, again, just for me as a fan, I got to watch growing up and now seeing you get to work with these guys and see, I, I can just sense that there's a, a sense of how did I get here <laughs> and a bit of excitement from you that I think is making this an incredible run for you. Yes. No, absolutely. To kind of go off of what you said, of you know, how did I get here? I've been thinking about recently just of myself as a kid wanting to be a professional wrestler. And I remember the day sitting in a diner with my parents coming up with the name Leo Rush. And I remember wanting to be signed to WWE and I remember wanting to wrestle for New Japan Pro Wrestling and I remember wanting to wrestle for TNA and Impact and just all these places and I was just thinking to myself like man like, I was a kid with a dream and watching all of these people on TV and now I get to fly across the world and bump into some of these people that I've watched and they can come up to me with a hug and say Leo, it's so good to see you. And I'm like, how? How did I get here? How did I, you know, get to a point where I, I'm glad that we're talking about this because I was thinking about if I wanted to tweet it out or not. But my first wrestling t-shirt that I ever bought, just me being a fan and wanting to have a t-shirt of a wrestler, I bought a Daniel Bryan t-shirt. Whoa! It was, I think it was like an Obey inspired shirt and it's just said yes at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. I remember that one. The black one? Was it the black one? I had a gray one. It was It was like... Okay, yeah, I know exactly the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was... And to be in the ring with him was mind-blowing to me. To be able to see that match that he had with Mox was mind-blowing to me. The fact that, you know, I was there live. It's, it's been a pretty cool experience the second go-around. Yeah, this run is exciting to me. I, I want to touch back on how you said, you know, you came up with the name Leo Rush in a diner with your parents. <laughs> so they're, they were obviously very supportive of you being a wrestler then, if this is something you've been talking about, you know, realistically your entire life. What was the response when you did tell them, like, I'm going to go be a wrestler now, bye? <laughs> I feel like I didn't even really have to tell them. They, they knew from the jump. I don't talk about it a lot. But I was a huge wrestling fan as a kid, like huge. My my room, my bedroom was covered in wrestling pictures. I had tubs and tubs of wrestling toys. I had so many wrestling DVDs and VHSs, and I was literally obsessed with wrestling. You know, I've been an athlete my entire life. I probably should be in the MLB right now. I should probably be a wrestler. Mm -hmm. But I stuck to just my love and my passion and the joy that I have for wrestling. And I turned that into my career. I turned that into my life. It's been really cool. Leo Rush, obviously coming from my, my, my first name, which is Lionel. I don't know if a lot of people know that. They probably do know that. Fun fact of the day. Yeah. Fun fact. Uh, L-I-O. A lot of people in high school call me Leo. A lot of people call me Lai. So, yeah, that's where Leo came from. And then Rush came from not only my physical speed in the, in the ring, but it also came from my trainer who told me that I needed to, and excuse my language, he always used to tell me that I needed to slow the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> I was always like in a hurry and in a rush, quote unquote, in a rush to like learn. As soon as I did one thing, I wanted to hurry up and do the next thing. I wanted to hurry up and do the next thing. And he just used to always... Just tell me to relax. So that's where the last name Rush came from. So, yeah, it was pretty pretty cool how I came up with that. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the the background before all of that. Uh, let, let's talk about kind of the, the, the humble beginnings of your career professional wrestling. You know, the, some of the earliest work people know from you was, was really CZW, it feels like. What was that experience like uh, in the beginning? The beginning of my wrestling career was very interesting. I don't think anybody really knew what to make of me in my in my earlier years. I think I was very talented. I was very athletic when I first started. Um, so I think that I had that going for me um, in the ring as far as in-ring capability. People just saw that I was a really young and athletic kid. I used to travel a lot with 
people who are that you see that is on TV right now. I was the young kid in the cars. I was the young kid, you know, in the locker rooms. Now, 10 years later, you see the whole locker room is just filled with young people. But it wasn't like that when I, when I first started wrestling. I was literally like one of the only kids on one of these like big shows. You know, I was the only kid on a PWG show. I was the only kid on CZW. I was the only kid at Beyond. All of these like really big places that people were talking about. And I can't just say that it was me. It was people that I, that I traveled on the road with and who decided that they wanted to take a liking to me and help me grow and help me get to where I am today. Guys like Swerve, guys like Sammy Callahan, guys like Ricochet, Will Ospreay, all of these, all of these guys, they, they helped me get to where I am today. So it's crazy. You know, it, it's interesting because I remember, you know, the, it, it was really the PWG stuff and particularly when Danielle Fischel was like really high on Leo Rush and she, oh, buddy. I felt like that put a lot of eyes on you at the time. And yeah, like I, I, at the time I had heard of Leo Rush, but then when it was like, okay, all of a sudden Topanga is like hanging around PWG shows and she's like really into Leo Rush. And all of a sudden it, it, I started noticing you popping up a whole lot more around that time period. Yeah. <laughs> People really respect Topanga's opinion on wrestling. That's, a, yeah. that's what I've learned today. <laughs> no, that was a really fun and exciting time period. I think that was that PWG era for me was right off of me not re-signing with, uh, with Ring of Honor. Um, I was in Ring of Honor for about a year and then uh, I went off on the independent circuit for a little bit and PWG was, was one of those places that I was starting to catch a good amount of steam and a lot of people started to, to know who I was and which was which was very it was very weird for me. It was weird for me. You know, I was on I was obviously started off on the Indies, uh, you know, but they weren't like really big places. And then to go from that to Ring of Honor, but I was so used to being on Ring of Honor and being on you know television and having like a little bit different of a experience in wrestling, being able to wrestle on TV and wrestle some of the biggest names in wrestling literally today, which was a very crazy year you know, roster wise when I was in Ring of Honor. But to come out of that and start doing indies again, but people are now saying like, oh man, like I, uh, I was watching you on Ring of Honor. Like that was really cool for me because it felt like I put in a lot of work to be able to carry that into independent promotions and just continue to build my name. So that was a, that was a fun era for me. Hell yeah. Oh man, this is awesome. I love that you're just like the epitome of hard work and all of that's just coming together. And we've got so much more to talk about with Leo Rush here on AEW Unrestricted coming up after the break. Unrestricted. It's Aubrey and Will. We're talking to Leo Rush, and this has just been such an inspiring conversation, just seeing kind of the ups and downs you've been through the first time at All Elite Wrestling, the second time at All Elite Wrestling, and just seeing the person, not even just the wrestler, but the person that you've grown into has been really, really awesome. And I'm glad we've gotten the chance to talk to you today about it. And since we're on the topic of indies, I actually wanted to discuss a little bit because I think before you came back to AEW, you and I were on a prestige show together. And you were facing one one of my buddies, Jaden. <laughs> and I had not seen your character at the time, which was this black heart Leo Rush that was absolutely terrifying. I'll say his name three times. I know, right? Oh, we've said it once, so let's keep track. But I'm curious because like everyone sort of like evolves and grows, not only just as people, but also as wrestlers and characters. So sort of what have you taken from the characters you've played on the indies? How have you incorporated those into the Leo Rush that we're seeing on AEW television today? I think the Leo Rush that you're seeing on AEW television today is a very raw, real, and I guess I can say unrestricted Leo Rush. This is me to a T. This is who I am. I like to talk about it because it's kind of corny, but it's kind of cool at the same time. But I made a theme song called I'll Be Me. And I feel like you know, the lyrics to it are essentially just telling people that I'm going to be unapologetically me. And, you know, if, if you don't like it, then, oh, well, you know, I feel like so many people struggle with who they are or who they want to be or how they can be different than the next person. And I always 
tell people that if you just be yourself, you're already different than the next person. I'm writing that down. You know, so many people are scared to be themselves and I'm guilty of it. You know, I'm still kind of guilty of it. You know, I'm still growing, I'm still learning. I'm still learning myself, learning who I am, learning how to communicate, learn how to communicate to people that this is who I am and be comfortable with that. So the person that you're seeing, the wrestler that you're seeing on AEW right now is the person that I am becoming, the person who I've always wanted to be and the, the, the person who I know I am. And that's, that's me. That's Leo Rush. That's the person who can works hard and uh, loves music and loves fashion and loves entertaining and loves bringing people up with him and loves contributing to other people's success. You know, that's me. So you're saying, you're saying me. I love it. I want to talk a little bit about the music. The fact that that's something that uh, fans have really gotten to experience from you over the last few years. And you've, you've gotten to, to really find your, your groove in that and find your sound. Talk a bit about what inspires you musically. I think life experiences different vibrations and time periods that you live in. I feel like making music is almost my voice. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out how to communicate to people who I am or who I want to be or how I am. And I feel like music is my voice. You know, I'm not, when I'm in a very professional setting, I feel like I do know how to bring those words to play. But when we're getting more intimate and we're talking about things that do cut deep and things that do hit the surface, I do struggle with that a little bit. So I feel like with my background, uh, with my family, you know, being musicians and being artists, I feel like that is just a part of me. You know, music isn't something that I just wanted to, oh, I want to like just randomly be a music artist one day. It's like, I, this, I feel like this is just something that has come out of me because this is what I am used to or what I know. Or, so music to me is, is very emotional to me. It's very uplifting to me. It's very, I feel like music can be so inspiring in so many ways, it can be so influential in so many ways. It can dictate people's moods. It can dictate people's thought processes. It can, you know, music is so important to me and not just the lyrics, but the melodies and the harmonies and the, the, the BPM and, you know, all that stuff triggers human emotion and interactions and, and so many different things. So I hope that music is something that a lot of people are going to hear more from me now that I am in AEW, I plan on, you know, putting that in the forefront a lot more. So I'm looking forward to it. So you've been very open about your struggles with mental health a lot of times in your song lyrics and whatnot. How do you practice self-care? That is a very good question, Aubrey. That is something that I'm actually still trying to figure out to this day. I feel like I give so much of myself to so many people. I'm a husband, I'm a dad of three boys. Poor oh, buddy. Oh, I, I've got four sisters. I'm busy. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm hard on myself when it comes to that. Self-care is one of those things that I try my best to focus on, but I'm not the best at it because I'm a, I'm a workaholic. You know what I mean? I, I bury myself in, in work all the time. Not because, you know, I'm trying to distract from something or because I'm trying to push out to do something that isn't self-care but this is just like again this is just who i am i've been this way since i was a kid uh i've been a hustler since i was a kid i've been you know a go-getter since i was a kid so i i need help in slowing myself down <laughs> sometimes it takes practice it takes practice and uh but the music helps like that's that's also why i like you know making music because it does sit me down it helps me mentally process everything that I'm going through, it helps me relax physically because I definitely am here, there and everywhere. So it helps me kind of sit down in one spot. I'm also a good, I'm a big like wellness person too. Uh, I do like to take care of my, my body. No, not just my mom, but I do like to take care of my body with, you know, cryotherapy and acupuncture and all the good stuff that people should be doing. Well, uh, I guess to, to bring this back around, 
I, I want to fast forward. When it's all said and done, what do you want people to know and remember about this particular run? That I'm one of the best to ever do it. Hell yeah. Like, I, I don't think we can do any more. I think that's just how you have to end it. Just leave that in people's minds. So the next time they see him go, yeah, no, he's the best. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we'll just pull that clip. And we're like, yeah, we knew. No, we knew. We knew. See, we had the proof, guys. <laughs> here it was. He said it. We heard it here first. AEW Unrestricted. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, Leo. It was awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. You can follow... Leo Rush on Instagram and X. I am Leo Rush. And of course, you can listen and follow this podcast. New episodes every Thursday, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We've got video episodes with all of our mugs on them. Uh, they release earlier in the week. Check our YouTube channel, AEW Unrestricted. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and catch all of the latest AEW shows on the go when you download the TNT and TBS apps from the App Store and Google Play. Then sign up for a weekly newsletter at tntdrama.com slash elite fleet. Get all the updates on upcoming shows, live events, sweepstakes, merchandise, and more. Dynamite TBS Wednesdays, Rampage TNT Fridays, Collision Live Saturdays, ROH streams every Thursday. I'm Aubrey Edwards. That's Will Washington. Leo Rush, thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Peace out. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gonna turn it.